everyone. To the Classical Studios rehearsal project of Twelfth Night, or what you will. Please take a moment now and turn off all your cell phones and tuck all belongings beneath your chairs. be the food of love. Play on. Give me excess of it. That surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That straight again. It had a dying fall. as it was before. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her hand may do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloister she will veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine, all this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh, and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath the heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother, how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled, her sweet perfections with one self king. Away before me, two sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. <laughs> Saying so, there's gold. Mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope the like of him. Knowst thou this country? Aye, madam, well, for I was bred and born, not three hours travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino? I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence. And then, t'was fresh in murmur, as you know, what great ones do, the less will prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count, that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died. For whose dear love, they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she would admit no kind of suit, no, not the duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. I pray thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid. For such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent, I'll serve this duke. What else may hap to time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch and your mute 
mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. Thank thee. Mm -hmm. Lead me on. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? I'm sure care is an enemy to life, right? By you my troth, Sir Toby, you mm -hmm. must come in earlier nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. You must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And they be not to let them hang themselves by their own straps. Oh, that quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Aguchi? Ah, uh, he. He's a fool and a prodigal. Fine, if you'll say so. He speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and hath all the good gifts of nature. He's a very fool. He's a great quarreler. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece. I'll drink to her so long as there is a passage in my throat to drink, Illyria. What wench? Here comes Sir Andrew Aguface! <laughs> Sir Toby Belch! How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew! Oh, bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost? What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is fronter, boarder, wooer, a sailor. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Huh, fare you well, gentlemen. And now let part so, Sir Andrew, thou mightst never draw a sword again. And thou part so, mistress, I would I might never draw a sword again. <laughs> Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have. And here's my hand. Now, sir, <laughs> thought is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart? What's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Why, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my finger's end. Mary, now let go your hand. I'm barren. <laughs> oh, knight, when did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think. <laughs> Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has, but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe <laughs> that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought that I'd forswear it. Faith, I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? <laughs> do or not do. I would I had bestowed that time into the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. No, has an excellent head of hair. Why? Would that have mended my hair? Past <laughs> question, for thou seest it will not curl my nature. Well, but it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. <laughs> it hangs like flax and to staff, and I hope to see a hussif take thee between her legs and spit it off. <clears throat> Faith, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. I've heard her swear it. Tut, there's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels sometimes altogether. Art thou good at these kickshaws as night? As any man in Illyria. What is thy excellence in a galliard night? I think I have the back trick, simply as strong as any man <laughs> in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Whoever had these gifts, the curtain before him. Is it a world to hide virtues in? What shall we set about some rebels? What shall we do else? Let me see the caper. Higher. Higher. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> Excellent. If the do continue these favors toward you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but 
three days, and already you are no stranger. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. Who saw Cesario? Ho! On your attendance, my lord, here. Stand you a while aloof. Cesario, thou knowst no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book in of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied excess. Stand at her doors, and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow, as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous, and leap all civil bounds, rather than make unprofited return. <laughs> Say I do speak with her, my lord, what then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it, for they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a barful strife. Where I woo, myself would be his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. Or you'll be turned away. Is not that as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely. You are best. Which, and it be thy will, put me into good fooling. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellow? Take away the lady. Good. <laughs> you are a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna that drink and good counsel will amend. For give the dry full drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot let the botcher mend him, anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin, and sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If thought this simple syllogism will serve, so, if it will not, what remedy? <laughs> <laughs> As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty's a flower. <coughs> the lady bad take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bad then take away you. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. <laughs> Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in heaven, Madonna. I know his soul is in he hell, heaven, fool. The more fool, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven, take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity, which decays the wise, doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity, for the better increasing your folly. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool who had no more brains than a stone. <laughs> Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. Oh, you are yes. sick with self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam, tis a fair young man. And well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. <laughs> Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but mad man. Fie on him! <laughs> Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. <laughs> Here comes one of thy kin. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman? A gentleman. What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. 
and the plague of these pickle herring. How now, son? Good sir, don't be cousin. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery, I defy lechery. There's one at the gate. Ay, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, and the third drowns him. He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, young young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He is fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. He has been told so, but still he'll speak with you. <laughs> what kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. <laughs> what manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Not old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy, as a squash is before it is a peace god. Who <laughs> would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him? Let him approach. Call him my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. <laughs> Give me my veil. Come, throw it toward my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honorable Lady of the House. Which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. <laughs> I pray you tell me if this be the Lady of the House, for I never saw her. <laughs> I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, oh, I have taken great pains to con it. <laughs> <laughs> Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Oh. Whence came you, sir? <laughs> I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it, I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. It is the more light to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, mm -hmm. and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not the time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good, Swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. <laughs> Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sir, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? In the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. <laughs> have you no more uh, to uh, say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission with your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, <laughs> sir, twill end your wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. 
Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adoration's fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. My lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberant hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia, oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth. But you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? <laughs> I followed my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless perchance you come to me again. <laughs> to tell me how he takes it. Very well. Oh, I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman, I'll be sworn thou art. <laughs> thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazing, not too fast, soft, soft. <laughs> Unless the master were the man, how now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. <laughs> Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. <laughs> <laughs> Desired him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up in hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. <laughs> I do, I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force, ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Will you stay no longer? Nor will you not that I go with you. By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me, the malignancy of my fate, but perhaps it's temper yours. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No. Still, sir. But I perceive in you, so excellent the touch of modesty, that you will not extort from me what I'm willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must. Know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Massilene, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both boy in an hour. If the heaven had been pleased, would we have so ended? But you altered that. For some hours before you took me from the breach of the sea with my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though you would say that she much resembled me, you so many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She sprung already in salt water. I seem to drunk her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad and Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for your love, let me be your servant. There you are at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I'm yet so near the manners of my mother that, upon the least occasion more, my eyes will tell the tales of me. I'm bound to the Count Orsino's court. Fell off. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. Else would I very shortly see thee there. But 
Come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. She returned this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She asked, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance that she'll none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy as to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, mm -hmm. and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If oh. not, be it his that finds it. <laughs> I, I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much we thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me. <laughs> sure, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring, why he sent her none. I am the man. <laughs> if it be so, as tis, poor lady, she were better than a dream. <laughs> Disguise, I see thou art to wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper fault in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. <laughs> what will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now, alas the day, what thrift of sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time! Thou must untangle this. <laughs> it's too hard a knot for me to untie. <laughs> Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be a bed after midnight is to be up the times. Nay, by my troth, to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then as early, but to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed the times. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say, but I find it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar, therefore let us eat and drink. Marry and I say, a stoop of wine! Here comes the fool of faith! How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. Oh, by my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. Mm -hmm. Now a song. Here's six pence for you. Let's have a song. There's a testrel of me, too, if one night give a testrel. Will you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. <laughs> aye, aye, I care not for good life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting, journeys end and lovers meeting, every wise man. Excellent, good, of faith. Good, good. What is love? Tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure in delay. There lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth of stuff could not endure. Mellifluous voice, as I am true knight. The contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious of faith. 
But shall we rouse the night owl in a catch? Shall we do that? And you love me? Let's do it! I am dog in a catch! By our lady, sir, and some dogs may catch well. Most certain. Let our catch be thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. This is not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. <laughs> Come, begin. It begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, good. <laughs> Come, begin. Hold our dear sir. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave! Hold thy peace, thou knave! Hold thy peace, thou knave! Hold thy If my lady have not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. <laughs> my lady's a Cathayan. We are politicians. Free merry men be we. Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady. There dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. He shrewd married a knight, an admirable fool, lady. Aye, he does well enough as he be disposed, and so do I, too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. For the twelfth day, lady, 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 are you mad, or what are you? Neither <laughs> thy wit, manner, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night. Do ye make an alehouse of my lady's house? Is there no respect for place, person, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snack up! Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it please you to take your leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Fare thee well, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? I shall never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much to your credit. I bid him go. What, and if you do? Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, by St. Anne, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth too. Thou art in the right. <laughs> Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Mariah. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. <laughs> <laughs> Shake your ears! <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Counts was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a neighbor and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess as possesses. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, and I thought that I'd beat him like a dog. Why, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight. Well, I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. He's so crammed as he thinks, with excellency that it is his grounds of faith, that all that look on him love him, and all that vice in him Will my revenge by notable cause to work? What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, oh, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. Excellent, I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <sighs> He shall think by the letters thou wilt drop that they came from my lady and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse would now make him an ass. Oh, ass, I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. I will plant you two. 
And let the fool make a third, where he shall come <laughs> observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Panvisalia. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle. <laughs> True bread and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once too. Let's to bed, <laughs> Thou hast need of send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for more money, knight, if you'll have thee not to me and call me cut. Come, let us burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come night. Come night. Give me some music. Now, tomorrow, friend. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old and antic song we heard last night, methought it did relieve my passion much. He is not here, so please your lordship that should sing it. Who was it? Vesti, the jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Well, seek him out, and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She is not worthy, <laughs> then. What years in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old, by heaven. <laughs> Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. <clears throat> For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Oh, fellow, come, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain, and dallies with the innocence of love like the old adage. Are you ready, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I pretty, sing.
nor thy pains. No pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time. <laughs> <laughs> Give me now leave to leave thee. No, the melancholy god protect thee. Farewell. <laughs> Let's all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. Tis but that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart's so big to hold so much. They lack re 